Hey guys, Mr. Tolly here. Something a little different today. This is about to be a teardrop trailer, teardrop camper. But, as you can see, there's no fender over there. And this one is just held on with a couple of ice grips. So, I kind of wanted to show a little bit of this. Um, yeah, so there's no backs on the fenders. And I wanted them that way so I had a little flexibility with them to uh, get them mounted and stuff. But I need to make mounts. And part of what I need to do is in the back, I just have it clamped right to the frame. But I need the fenders three quarters of an inch away from the frame so that when I put the sides on the outside of the frame, I'll have room for the plywood. So, what I'm doing. Yes, let's go to the other side. I kind of made some mounts, but I'm not real happy with them. So I think I'm going to try something else because I can't slide. <sighs> See here, I'm not a welder. Forgive my welding. Um, it is on the outside of the frame. What I'm going to do is move it to the bottom of the steel so that when I slide my sides down on there, I don't have to notch them out or anything. So we're going to try to do this again. <laughs> which I'm not thrilled about but it is what it is so I'll try to take you along as much as I can I've got some rusty angle iron there and there's just surface rust on it so it's not a big deal and I'm gonna cut that into to six inch pieces the frame the outer the perimeter of the frame is one by two angle iron the cross braces, um, the one, this one, is one and a half by one and a half steel tube. The tongue is two by two square steel and with a connector for a two inch ball. This is West Bay up there, that's the guy that made it for me, West Bay Welding. I had some expanded steel put on the front here, so I got uh, some place to set my battery box and stuff. Um, but he did a phenomenal job on the trailer. This thing is so solid it ain't even funny. The axle I had, and we had to widen it just a little bit to accommodate the 14-inch uh, car tires. <laughs> the fenders I got big enough to accommodate a 15-inch wheel if I should so decide to do that. Uh, that's about it right now. I'm going to cut that into a couple of six inch pieces and uh, we'll pick it up after that. A couple little pointers when you're marking stuff like this. Um, a, use some kind of a square. This is just a tri square thing. I've had this thing for decades. And I've got a couple of them laying around. And use a color that you're going to be able to see when you're marking it. I need to see that mark as I'm cutting it with my cutoff grinder. So, I'm going to get a cut. I'm going to get both of them cut, and then we'll be back. A couple of safety things. I'm going to be using this grinder. Unfortunately, I can't have the guard on it with this particular wheel, which kind of sucks. I'm working on get, making a modification so that I can, but in the meantime, this is what i got to do. I could cut this with a hacksaw, but it'd take me absolutely forever. Um, when you cut your cord, make sure your cord goes behind you so it's not in the way in front of you. Um, bad things can happen. I see that a lot in uh, other YouTube videos, people getting really close to cutting their cords. Don't want to do that. Clamp your work solid. Make sure it's going to stay there. If I had better clamps, I'd use them, but that's what I've got, so that's what I have to work with. I'll be buying some new clamps sooner or later, as soon as I can find some that I can afford. <laughs> Those darn things are spendy. Anyway, off we go. Alright, this mount, let's set it up here. This mount is going to be for the back. And it's going to go this way. There's going to be a piece of 1 inch square stock coming off here. And it's going to be about 8 inches long. So there'll be 2 inches welded to the frame. There'll be about 3 quarters of an inch. 
plus probably an eighth or a sixteenth to account for the sheet metal and then I'm going to weld on that one inch piece on the top. So the mount is going to go like this. I want to cut this here off at a 45 and I want to cut this off at a 45 and I'll throw it on the floor too. And uh, you'll see the logic behind that once I get it on. So I'm going to cut those be back. Alright, this part of the mount is nearly done. I do have to put a twist in it, just a little one, so that it matches the curve of the fender. So in order to do that, before I weld anything to the frame, because I want everything to fit tight, I'm going to make, I'm going to cut about three quarters of the way up on each side here. And then I'll be able to twist it, because you're not twisting a six inch piece of angle iron, even if it is only eighth inch. You're not going to twist it, not when it's only six inches long. So I'm going to go ahead, cut, make those cuts. I can hold it up on the frame and get an idea where everything's got to twist it to, how hard it's got to twist, and then I can tack weld it back together. Um, and, you know, I kind of do, eh. <laughs> I'm not a welder, but I can get by. So I'm going to do that to both pieces, um, and then we'll get the other piece, the one by welded on. Be back in a minute. Alrighty. So these tri-squares are pretty cool because I can set it for 8 inches, run it right up to the back edge, back here, and just mark it down here and go all the way around so I know I'm going to make a good square cut. So I'm going to cut it. Well, that's what the mount's going to look like eventually when it's done. The cut there, I'll fill that in. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make a couple of tack welds along the top here and along the bottom. Those are welding magnets that I have there. Yeah. Get the side view. They just have different angles on them that are supposed to be precise. And uh, holds everything together while you're trying to weld it. <laughs> so right now I'm just going to make some tack welds to hold everything together nice. And then we'll finish weld everything a little later. Um, tack welds are easy to cut off if I need to so I will tack weld everything get it put in place under the trailer and uh, after that I will finish weld them so I'll be back when I'm ready to put them under the trailer Go. a couple of tack welds just to hold everything in place while I make sure everything is gonna fit before I weld up my cracks there that I made and I was off with my measurement apparently <laughs> so eh, it is what it is in case you're wondering for a welder that's what I've got I got it from Northern Industrial Tool um, and it's just it's 125 amp um, flux core MIG welder so the flux is built into the to the welding wire which is probably why you get so much spatter out of it and they're not a great welder it's not definitely nothing a professional would ever use but for what I do it works great but that is why I had my tra trailer welded by a professional so just thought I'd show you that real quick that's my booger welds I'm not a welder I can booger weld though and uh, these are just fenders so I'm not too worried about it We'll be back. Well, there's where I'm stopping today. They're on. I just have to uh, tip the trailer up so I can get a little better angle on it to finish weld. Front one. So, there we go. I'm going to call that, as far as you need to see, done. I just got to finish up a little welding on it and get the top ground down. Um, and holds the fender really well. So we'll see more of it as time goes on. Thanks for watching. Stay safe and God bless.